There's a stain in my notebook where my coffee cup was And there's ash in the pages, now I've got myself lost I was writing to tell you of my feelings tonight A stain on my notebook brings your goodbye Oh, but now she's gone And I'm back on the beat The stain in my notebook Says nothing to me Oh, but now she's gone And I'm out with a friend Out with a friend With lips full of passion Hi guys, this is How to Play Black Coffee in Bed by Squeeze. Um, this is a request for one of my subscribers, Mike Lucci, um, but it's out there for everyone else to view as well. The chord sheet's on my website. And um, we're in the key of D. We've got a few tricky chords in this one. We start off with your D major chord. We have a B minor, which we're going to be playing as a bar chord, because this is a bit more of an advanced lesson. Um, so second fret, uh, A minor shaped bar chord. And then standard A major, however you play an open chord A major. And also a G major chord, absolutely standard. And uh, then we have this riff. Take it away, Dave, just as a demonstration. Um, just from the chords point of view, we'll cover the tab a little later in the lesson, or possibly in a separate video altogether. Um, <laughs> we're going to cover the tab part in a separate video, probably, uh, or later in the lesson. So let's just give us a demonstration of the, the main chords riff. Okay, so um, we have each chord played almost every two beats, but it's to a, a bit more of a, a swingy rhythm. So we've got your uh, D happening on beat one. We've got a mute on beat two. Strum your, uh, strum your D chord. Mute on beat two. Your B minor is on the two and. So um, just give us a demonstration of that, Dave. Beat one, strum, mute. The, the B minor is much earlier than the beats on, on the two and, but then you're muting still on beat four. So D, mute, B minor, mute. Two, three, four, D, mute, B minor, mute. And we're getting quite the, quite the tap there. If you want to uh, tap your guitar, the cool kind of acoustic guitar tap sound is actually your strings uh, hitting the frets, uh, the bridge position here. So if you want to get a sweeter tap sound, Tap with your thumb or with your pick, but specifically strings hitting the, uh, the, the frets there. Like that. See, compare. Compare without that. It just kind of sounds dull. Hit it at the bridge there. Tap. You get that cool sound. Um, hit the, just that first half of the riff. Two, three, four, D. Suddenly got a really sweet tap. Uh, A major and then the D major to that same rhythm. A, mute, D, and, and we're hitting that tap. A, tap, D, tap. Yeah, we get that tap less on electric guitar, but if you want more of a band sound with electric guitar, you don't need to tap kind of as hard. We're just doing kind of a, uh, a, a simple songbook version of, of this riff. Let's give it a go from the top. That riff kind of continues through into the verse with a slight tweak. Um, so this is the, the main part of the song, really. To a slow count. One, two, three, four. Tap B minor, tap. One more, two, three, four. And again. And Dave's giving a down up on the A major chord there, B one of your one and of your uh, second bar. The only variation to that is we have kind of two lines that alternate in the verse. We have 
um, the line we've just done, which is the instrumental part. And then we've got a line where he's singing over, where instead of the A chord, you will play a G. So if you play the one with a G first, and then alternate it with the G for an A, it's exactly the same rhythm as we've just talked you through. Give us an explanation or a demo of those two lines, Dave. So to the G, and then the second line, we have an A. Subtle difference, it wasn't in the tab that I, I searched for when I, when I first looked at this song, but I've added it on my chord sheet, which is on the website, so it's correct to the original. The G one is the one that he will sing, sing over, so just as a demonstration again, Dave, just me and you. Two, three, four, there's a stain on my notebook where my G, and then the next time, D, B minor, A. And it's those two lines that just alternate. Um, I hope this is a, a level that you, that you can keep up with, Mike, but it, you wanted it um, with the brief emails that you, that you sent me. You wanted kind of the proper version of this. B minor, that is a, a non-open chord way to do it, but really get used to the, the rhythm of it, I, I would say, rather than trying to keep up with the, the chord changes or anything like that. You want to get the rhythm of strum, tap, strum, tap, strum, tap, strum, tap. Um, that's the real feel of this song. We don't really want to be playing this one on, on the beat with all fours with these kind of um, bar chords because it's, um, it's a bit of a step up from there. So let's have a run through your verse together, nice and slow, and um, hopefully we can all keep up. One, two, three, four. D, B minor, G. And then you alternate that with your A major. Same again. As in the pages, now I've got myself lost. D, B minor, A, and a D. Same again. G this time. Feelings too nice. Out of state on the notebook that rings your goodbye. Lovely. Fairly common. Pop song chord sequence in the key of D. Really similar to uh, Waiting on the World to Change, isn't it? John Mayer. Definitely check out that song if you can play that. It's virtually the same thing, so you may as well go for it. Okay, chaos breaks out in the chorus because we have some uh, trickier bar chords and we're, we're going off the beaten track with chord choices here, so we're, we're less kind of standard. So we've got a B minor for two bars and we're breaking away from the, the kind of rhythm we were doing before. I really suggest doing down, down, up, up, down, so it fits perfect for this part, though we can start to add that tap in with that as well. So two bars of B minor with down, down, up, up, down, first of all, Dave. Now you can see you're finding it hard not to do that tap because it is, it is how the song kind of goes. Uh, try and do it without the tap at all, down, down, up, up, down. Nicely done. The tap really does give it the, the kind of feel of the song and we're adding it on beats two and four. Why beats two and four, Dave? What's the significance of two and four? They're like the midpoints. They're like the midpoints. I'd say three is your midpoint of a bar, really. So beats two and four. <laughs> it's all good. I just work it. <laughs> beats two and four are where your snare hits. And um, snare drum is the, the part of a drum kit that's kind of the loudest point. That also dictates where your count is altogether. The tempo of a song, the thing that you're counting one, two, three, four, or the thing that you're nodding your head to or tapping your foot to, is dictated by the snare drum. And if you want to get your rhythm guitar to a higher level, you want to showcase that in the strumming patterns that you do. You want to give beats two and four an accent, which means play them louder, or we're adding this tap, so we're kind of pulling away from the, um, we're, we're, we're holding back, we're making that beat quieter, we're not strumming on that beat, you're just percussively hitting your guitar. Two bars of B minor, with the tap as you were doing it before, don't let me mess you up anymore. Two a count, two, three, four, one, tap, three, tap, one, two, three, four. Uh, quite a bit bit slower than that, really, because we've got some tricky chord sequences and it's, it's not a fast song. So one more time, that B minor with this new strumming. 
One, two, three, four. Down, mute up, up, down, 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 up, up, down, 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 up, up, down, 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 up, up, down. No, you're not tapping. Let me just demonstrate it real quick. Hand, hand, hand is coming back to use now, but it's still, I haven't used it for a couple of months, so I'm rusty. But down, down, up, up, down, 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 up, up, down. And now she's gone. Okay. That one, please, Dave. That's it. And then we've got an F sharp major chord, which is easier than it sounds. It's just straight up to a six string root note with the same shape you were using anyway. Um, give that a go for two bars, two, three, and I'm back on the beat. C sharp minor, which is the same as your B minor chord, but you want to move it up two frets. So your root note is at the fourth fret. Um, give that a strum for it again for two bars. The stain, two, three, four, the stain on my notebook. Okay, and then we kind of return to normality after that. So just strum each one of those chords once to make sure everyone at home's doing them correctly. We got your B minor chord, one strum. F sharp minor, straight up. F sharp major. F sharp major, that's correct. Uh, moving it to C sharp minor. And there you three very much trickier chords at this stage. No open chord options. We gotta go for the bar chords, really. Then we've got an A major chord back to open major chords. Strum as an A major. That kind of completes that that section. So from the start of the uh, chorus, let's just do it four strums on the beat just to um just to work through the this part of the song. On the beat from B minor in one, two, three. Now she's gone. F sharp major, and I'm back on the beat. C sharp minor, the stain on my notebook. A major, says nothing to me. Then D major for two bars, nice and easy, open chord. Yeah, now she's gone. G major, two bars, and I'm out with a friend. A major for two bars, friend, with lips full of G major for two bars, and coffee in bed. Hallelujah, back, back to the riff we were doing before, D, B minor. Um, Okie dokie, let's see if we can integrate that same chord sequence. Remember, you want to be looking at this, this chord sequence, you would have it printed out in front of you or viewing it on my website with this video on, embedded in it as well. Um, let's go for it with that strumming pattern we were doing from before, but slightly slower. I want you to feel that beat, feel the two and four in this groove. From the B minor, start of the chord sequence, slower. One, two, three, four. Slower. Two, three, F sharp. Three, four. One, two, three, four. C sharp minor. A major, standard open chords from now on. D, two bars, she's gone. And I'm out with a friend. Out with an A. Two bars of G. And coffee in bed. A, ba da 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 A and a D. Beautiful. Uh, Okie dokie. So we also have a middle eight section where there's a guitar solo and the chord sequence to this is E flat. Each chord for two bars. E flat major, F for two, G major and A. Um, it's the E flat and the F chord that we're going to do as your bar chords. Uh, e flat we're doing at six fret, um, A major bar chord at six fret root note. Give that a strum for us, Dave. So this first finger here is barring at the 6th fret and we're playing an A major chord with your three weaker fingers. Uh, then you've got to kind of shoot down. You could move that two frets higher up. Dave prefers to kind of shoot down to the standard F bar chord. For your next F, you could move that two frets up. Barring at 8th fret. This is a bit high. It's an awkward kind of bar. 
So you can do a standard F bar chord, standard open G, and a standard A major as well. So from the E flat, this is kind of to the same rhythm and everything we were doing in the choruses a second ago. So from the E flat on the beat, one, two, three, four, E flat, two, three, four, one, two, three, F, F, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, G, and A. And then you're on B minor, you go to your chorus. Now she's gone. And it kind of goes to that part, okay? Um, so let's do that part with the strumming that we were doing earlier. Down, down, up, up, down with a bit of a mute, or whichever you're doing at the moment. In a one, two, three, four. Two, three, four. One, two, F. And an A. And that's that section. Then you're on to a chorus. Um, Okie dokie, seeing as that's um, not taking too much time, let's also have a look at the riff at the start so we can play a bit of the, the lead lick at the start. Um, Okie dokie, so if we're checking out the tab, we have an open A string. And then a hammer on at the second fret on the A string. Can you play that for me, Dave? Um, so pick and then hammer on with your first finger. The second fret. And then straight after that, open D. Ba -da -bam. That's it, play again. So we're picking the two open strings and hammering on the D. Can you do that as slow as you can while getting a really strong hammer on, please, Dave? Perfectly done. When you, ha when you pick the D string, you should lift off your first finger from the hammer on. That prevents you having any bleed over of any of the strings. If you keep first finger down, it'll just ring out a little bit, that's all. Uh, one more time. Perfect. Then we pick the D string again, and then go back to that second fret on the A string, which is a B note. Do do. Those two notes again. Open D. Second fret on the A string. From the top altogether, that would sound like. Let me start off then. Play it from the from the top. Da -da -dum, ba -da -dum. And that adds your open A. Just do the first half of the riff again with that open A at the end. That's the first half of your riff, and then open A string, second fret on the A string, and then open D string twice. Do 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 do. Remember to take your first finger off when you change strings, otherwise the coordination kind of goes. Do 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 one more time. You can hammer that one on, or you can pick it. It's saying a hammer on in the tab, but it's slow enough for you to be able to pick it. You just want to get. I want you to get a really strong hammer on it at, at this point just to exercise that. Um, one more time, first half of the riff, demo div. First half of the riff, that's it. One more time, two, three, four. And that hammer on is just before beat one. It's the open D that is actually on beat one. So did a one, two, three, four. And when I count you in, try and play along. Two, three, four, ba -da bam. And then second half of the riff, do, 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 do. Let's give a couple of those to a slower count. Slightly slower, Dave, in two, three, four. And again. Even slower than that, granny slow. You can start to put that riff in with your chords as well if you want to get fancy. So do the hammer on and then a D chord. Nicely demoed, Dave. So instead of the single notes, which are the root notes of the chords we're playing, we just simply play the chords themselves, but it does get very fiddly at this point, as Dave's worried face shows. 
<laughs> Let's give it a go one more time, Dave. Just give us a demo. Look at that look of concentration on his face. Um, but yeah, that's a really great way to into um, higher level uh, rhythm patterns, integrating the melody as well. And that'll do for us close up. Okay, doke, that's uh, how to play Black Coffee in Bed by Squeeze. Um, hope you enjoyed this lesson. This was a request from one of my subscribers. Um, there's a small fee for requests, but if you check um, the link in the description or search on my website for requests, you'll find out how we, can, me and Dave, or myself, can teach you any song that you want at all and um, give you all this, this kind of feedback and, and make it as much of a guitar lesson as we can for you guys. Hope you've enjoyed that. Take care of yourselves and we'll hopefully see you again.